Okay everyone, how are we doing? Welcome to Friday's video, The Celtic Way, with the morning briefing for Friday the 29th of March. I am Hamish, we've got Tony and Ryan on for the final morning briefing of the week, guys. And we're just a couple of days away now from Celtic return. It's been a long old international break. Tony, we're nearly back. Can I beat it? Love it. Bring it on. I wish it was Sunday, but hey, we'll get there, won't we? But yeah, fo real football's back, I think we all kind of club football it's what we care about isn't it uh, most yeah you know, lots of people support Scotland as well but you can't beat club football yeah buzzing for it Ryan yeah I think this has been the longest international break I've ever had or I've ever remembered <laughs> maybe it's because we've been doing the briefings and we've been trying to talk about different things but it feels like a long time coming this Livingston game it's probably been the most previewed Livingston game ever on the Celtic <laughs> way but yeah, looking forward to it on Sunday, you know, counting down the sleeps until we can we can go to the Tony Macaroni and enjoy the game. Hopefully it's a good game and a good win. But yeah, we're on we're on Friday, a good Friday, a couple of days until the game. Um yeah. Just looking to it and looking to get into it. I can confirm it's two sleeps, Ryan. All right, just uh, so you don't need to get your two abacus sleeps. out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just said counting the number of sleeps <laughs> out, just confirm no, there is two. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was a VAR check from Tony there, early doors. <laughs> We're not talking about, well, actually, we are talking about yeah. VAR today, but yeah. No, please, no VAR chat. I can't go any more VAR chat. Um, I think I said yesterday that I'd run out of talking points. I had nothing to say about Livingston <laughs> v Celtic, so you guys might ha have to help me out on, on today's video. Listen, before we get into the chat, um, let's just take a quick break from the action to talk about something that's uh, key to keeping our homes warm and cosy. We are thrilled to have Weissman, who are a global leader in the boiler industry, known for their top-notch German engineering, sponsor our very own podcast. And what's more exciting, they've teamed up with Scotland's very own award-winning installation team, MPH Boilers, making this a perfect match right here in Scotland. Weissman's Boilers are engineered to deliver not just warmth, but unparalleled efficiency and reliability. We're talking about cutting-edge technology that's designed to save you on energy bills and reduce emissions. And with MPH Boilers, you know you're getting service from the best in the business, a local team that's committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. As part of this incredible partnership, when you choose a Weissman boiler installed by MPH Boilers, you'll also get a free internet controller, which makes it a breeze to manage your heating anytime, anywhere. Plus, they're offering the first year service free. It's all about uh, giving you peace of mind and making sure you're looked after. So if your boiler is showing its age and you're considering an upgrade, this is your chance to get world-class engineering with local expert service. Weissman and MPH Boilers, it's a match made in Scotland and you can make sure to check them out and take the first step towards a warmer, more efficient home. Um, and final shout out of the, the morning briefing week for this uh, sensational deal we've got going. Yeah, a very sensational deal. Thank you very much for describing it as such. It definitely is. Uh, six months of access for just a pound on the Celtic Way website, plus a free Kyogo for a hashi print from renowned football artist made by Frankie. On there this morning, there is a piece from Tony, a very good piece, may I say, on... The magic that was Lubo, uh, Lubo Moravchik. I, I should have said a different word because that was <laughs> kind of mixed the two of them together. Um, there's, some things sound better in your head and then you say them and it doesn't sound as good. But yeah, the, the enigma, the, the legend that is Lubo, Lubo Moravchik, Tony was writing about today. So if you want to read about that, then please visit www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Thank you to everybody for the uptake so far. Um, we're still going to run this deal for a wee while yet, so if you aren't already subscribed, then please do so. www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe, and thank you very much. What were you writing about Lubo, Tony? As if by magic. I do a thing called Haggerty's Heroes, basically, and it's just huh. I pick someone from whatever era and say they were a hero to the Celtic supporters. So, so far, we've, we've did the Kendall Gleish, we've did Naka, did Henrik Larson. We bit a Lubo, so it's just anyone connected with the club who would deem my a hero. So I uh, maybe do some managers next as well, you know, cult personalities, that kind of thing. But yeah, Lubo today, the gift from God, says it all really, doesn't it? And a lovely quote from Zidane about him's on there. If you want to have a wee read at that, yeah. guys, uh, you can you can have a look at that. So yeah, uh, top boiler chat there as well, Hamish, new script for the old... Uh, 
basement boils, wonderful stuff. But uh, so we thank them as well, yeah. And yeah. if you're taking part in the deal, guys, thanks a lot. It means it means everything to us. Uh, right. So um, I never saw Lubo play, Ryan. I'm going to speak for you, and seeing as you're a good oh. few years younger than me, even you never saw Lubo play. Talk oh. us through the the genius of Lubo Moravci, because I know those in the comments will love to hear about him. He came too late. He came 10 years too late, Hamish. But my goodness, what a player. 33 year old, 330 grand. He got him from Duisburg in Germany. Dr. Joe brought him because he knew he was a sensational footballer. And I remember speaking to Paul Lambert about him. And he said in one training session, they were looking and thinking, Who is this guy? He's the most naturally two footed player they'd ever seen. Left, right, you know, didn't, didn't matter. Just tremendous. And then he's and his derby debut against Rangers, he scored twice. Yep. And like he had that kind of celebration looking around as if this is magic. And I think Lubo thought to himself, why well, should I came here early in my career? But he's just kind of looking around as if, why are you all going mental? Was, this is, was this a is dummy from Larson? A dummy, dummy from, from Larson, Larson and, he and a header. It. I swept it past Niemi. And the header yeah, was amazing. brilliant because he was kind of suspended yeah. in mid there. It's a great yeah. header, right? And he was just kind of looking around and he's thinking, I like this, I like the feel of this, you know, and the fans loved him, he was just brilliant. And then there was a moment against Hearts when he pulled the ball out of the air with his, his bum. My dad and always talked Oh, oh I mean, honestly, it was just, you know... It was his mind. <laughs> he tried to just, he, you could see it was a, it was a great bit of showboating, but I think Lubin we after is one of these guys who took the, the mantle and entertained and do something that's worth the admission money alone. And he took it upon himself to do that every time he took to the field in a Celtic jersey. And, and I... I've said it before, Celtic spent 980 grand and Henrik Larson and Louis Mimaravci combined, right? They are the mm-hmm. steals of the transfer century. If anybody can find two better deals, please let me know. And uh, and just for the fact that the two of them, but in particular Lubo, it was just the unbridled joy that he brought to the Celtic supporters just by doing things that came naturally to him. And they went to Ibrox and Henrik scored his 50th and Lubo scored twice. And honest yeah. to goodness, it was just, you, you talk about, I mean, every time somebody performs well, they call it a midfield masterclass. See, that day, Lubo put on, honestly, one of the best midfield masterclasses I think the Celtic supporters have ever seen. He destroyed them at Ibrooks, scored two cracking goals. You know, people were saying, Arif, the, the first one, he, he turned the uh, Rickson inside out and drew Kloss and just went, OK, I'm sticking it in there. Yeah. And then he did it again, you know, like, but 10 minutes later and it was one of the most enjoyable because that was one of the, the Celtic Rangers games that I covered uh, as a journalist and I just sat there thinking this guy's on fire <laughs> it's actually just, just brilliant to watch you know and uh, if your dad and your dad Ryan are talking about Lubo they witnessed something really special even Bertie Old said you know you talk about players that have played for Celtic you know that was closest to the lines and he said everybody will say Henrik but Bertie Old said it was Lubo because he was just a special maverick genius talent. And he was. He was just and it was a shame because he wanted to see more of him. And uh, I think Lubo himself said the best game he played was Juventus game when Celtic beat Juventus four three. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I've got visions of him for <laughs> one of the goals just turning yeah, and Juventus yeah. go back inside out, back and forward, back and forward. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And Pavel Nedved said, I had the misfortune of playing against Lubin Mimar. I've checked that night. <laughs> Pavel, Pavel Nedved, you know what I mean? Who yeah. was no slouch. You know, so, I mean, everybody's got their memories a little but just that smile when he scored and just kind of looking around as if, why, what, what's the fuss? It's, it's, it's all I do. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I hope people don't mind it. I don't think anyone minds us spending a few oh, minutes to no chat way. about Lubo Moravchik. I'm so I'm so jealous that you got to actually see him play <laughs> no, for Celtic. Um, I'm trying to think if we've had a a similar player, maybe Nakamura, maybe someone like Tom Rogic, but they're probably not quite at Lubo's level. Anyway, should we... Johnny Ryan, do you want to come in? You know who I'm going to say, but he scored two goals on his uh, Glasgow Derby debut as well. And then he started looking around the pitch as if I'm liking what I'm seeing here. And there's a guy that's, that's returning early. this weekend. Too I know early. it is too early. I know, absolutely. But the, the similarities, and people were saying that after a, a couple of games, not that he will hit that level because Lubo's a whole different stratosphere. And I think his age and his, um, how he got to the club only adds to his mystique and his sort of 
not cult hero because he was an actual hero for Celtic, but it adds to his mystique, the fact that he's 33, comes from basically nowhere. Nobody had really heard of him. I mean, people had heard him because he was an international footballer, but, you know, 33 years old to come into the team and to make such an impact for the, all those years, I, I, I just think it all adds to it, to be honest. A few uh, people saying they're off to, to YouTube to watch Lubo... Uh, highlights don't I leave last right night at, least, at, least, <laughs> at least wait until after this video and again uh, homage to Dr Joe Vengloss for bringing him you know Dr Joe was was roundly slaughtered for being uh, you know the manager at Celtic when he came in but you know he he, he bequeathed the gift of uh, Lubo who became as you say the, the gift from God or gift from God and all that kind of stuff but you know, we thank Dr. Joe Wengloss for that because he, he knew a player when he seen one and Lippo was <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, sensational player. Magic. Uh, John saying, I think I loved Lubo even more than Henrik. Uh, Sandra, <laughs> Sandra's saying, Sandra's one of those off to watch his best bits. All this chat about Lubo, as soon as you guys finish, I'm going to watch all his best bits. Truly a gift from God. Right, let's uh, move on from uh, Lubo to... The, the more exciting topic of SFA managerial <laughs> hearings and uh, the news yesterday that Brendan Rodgers uh, found out is punishment for his comments made after the defeat to Hearts at the start of the month. He's been given uh, a two-match ban, but one of the matches uh, is suspended, so he will not be in the dugout before, uh, during Sunday's game against Livingston. I think he can speak to the players up until 15 minutes before kickoff and... 15 minutes after full time uh, but other than that you won't see him on the touchline on, on Sunday but however he will uh, be part of the derby a week later, no punishment for that um, one game suspended I don't think he'll step out of line again so I don't think we'll have to worry about that. Um, me and you kind of predicted this Tony uh, Ryan Pick what up. did you make of it? Big up to you Hamish It'll sell you um, I was you know, you're disappointed that he's going to miss a game, but if he's going to miss any game, you'd want it to be the game against Livingston rather than the game against Strangers. The fact that he'll be available to be in the technical area for that massive game feels like advantage Celtic, if I'm being honest. I know they have to get get by Livingston first and, you know, famous last words and they need to do the business on, on Sunday before they, before they get to the big game at Ibrox, but it just feels like another just another positive going back into Celtic think of all these players returning from injury the manager will now be available you know that's been that's been in the background for 25 days since the since the the, the crime was committed 25 days ago you've been thinking about when that appeal and when the charge is going to be set and then and what what sort of punishment he's been, he's going to get one match without him um probably it'll be John Kennedy who will take the reins I don't think he's too much of a problem. Celtic should be more than good enough to beat Livingston anyway. But the fact of having the the manager, the the manager that's had so much success against Rangers this season and in the past, actually in the technical area for Ibrox, I just think it's a massive, massive advantage. Yeah, I'm disappointed that he's missing a game, but at least he isn't missing the Rangers game. But Celtic know what they need to do on Sunday. They just need to go and execute it now. I mean, we'll we'll never know what impact. Brendan Rodgers not been in the touchline would have had in the derby. I guess that, that's something we don't have to worry about now, Tony. Um, in terms of this weekend against Livingston, for me, you know, if the team can't take care of the the bottom team in the league who have won three league matches all season without Rodgers in the touchline, you know, we, we don't deserve anything out of this season. So um, is it a case of, I mean, Pete there saying much ado about nothing? In the yeah. end, it kind of sums up how I feel. Side show over. Time to win the title. End of. There's your title, it? Ryan. There's your title. No. That's it. And, and you, you know, it starts on Sunday. Don't need the manager to be present for a, for a game against Livingston. Do you? Let's see if you do. You know what I mean? Just go out there and, and do the business and just, you know, be, be as professional and as clinical as possible. You know, it has been hanging over them like a cloud. You know, the, and, and there are wider discussions to be had about it in terms of what was discussed. In the meeting and all that, but we might find that out in the fullness of time. I'm just delighted with the the way it worked out, and I say a big up to yourself because you spoke about that and we spoke about it and we kind of erred on the side of that, and that's what we thought would happen. So, uh, yeah, well done on that. Uh, but I think we had a feeling, didn't we? You kind of when the way we were talking about 
so outcomes. We kind of came down on that one. But yeah, it's, uh, I just thought, right, fine. After yesterday, I, I tweeted kind of, uh, I'd been off all day, and I just kind of tweeted, did anything happen Celtic-wise that I should be aware <laughs> of, you know? So well, a few people got in touch, but I just do, I agree with Pete on this one, it's kind of much ado about nothing. No, And whether John Beaton gets to referee Celtic games between now and the end of the season, we will see. These are the things that you'll will be the dot, dot, dot to the discussions that were had. We'll see that in the films of time. And obviously, Don Robertson's the man in the middle, Again, I'd like to see the kind of cameras panning in on Brendan Rodgers beforehand if he gets to see Don Robertson before they go onto the field. That would be fun. But uh, listen, Celtic got a job at hand to do now. Livingston is uh, the next game. I think they'll be focused. I think it was Ryan that was writing earlier on in the week or he tweeted out they'll have McGregor back, Cameron Carter-Vitter's back, Rio Hitati back. They'll have the, the, the toss-up between Kuhn or uh, Yang. No, lots of positives there, isn't there? You just sort of... Sunday can't come quick enough now. You know, the one yeah. negative being the manager won't be able to speak to them and, and be on the touchline. But I think they'll, they'll have been well-drilled. They've had a lot of days to think about this. And the managers had a lot of days to think about who he's starting to live and will be as well. So bring it on, Hamish. We're all choking as fans for Sunday, aren't we? Yeah. We hope we hope that the players feel the same way. It's been, as you say, Ryan, it's been a long international break. I know some of them have been away, but surely, you know, yeah, especially the the people who have been left at Lennox Town, they must be just buzzing to get this going and try and win this league. Yeah, I'm just hoping that there's a galvanisation now between probably the support and the team and the manager, everybody now pulling in the same direction, regardless of the way the performances have been this season and they have been up and down, more downs and up probably, but now from now until the end of the season, Celtic have got a job to do and it's up to everybody to be a united front from now until the end of the season. There's so many players coming back from injury that are going to be so, so important. Katowicz has got a couple of games before the international break, delighted that he didn't go away with the USA, even though they did really well in their time in, in their time playing international football. So he'll be another couple of weeks down the line. Um, Hitati played in a bounce game, so he'll be fit and firing, ready to go. Cal McGregor was spoken about yesterday by Jerry McCulloch. He's been as returning imminently. So if he's imminent, then you would assume that would be in three days' time against. Can I, can against... I just say quickly? Do, do you think Jerry McCulloch saying that? means anything or do you think that's just the kind of thing someone would say like oh Callum McGregor mm. imminent like he's coming back soon you know what I mean I just think imminent means the very very near future which is probably the next game and I don't I just don't think he would say that if if it was another couple of weeks down the line why would you even why would you bring him up if there was any problem I'm, I'm hoping that's the case but Callum McGregor's a massive he's been a massive miss for Celtic and Scotland in an international break, watching Scotland, they're not the same team without Cal McGregor. Um, and for Celtic, you know, his performances have been up and down this season, as of Celtics in general. But when he's on form, you can see the difference. And when Cal McGregor's on form, Celtic won football matches. That's the reason why Celtic won their last two matches against Rangers, and why, if he does play and play well, they may very well beat Rangers at Ibrox once again. He's, he's that important to the team. I think out of those three players that could return that have been having injury problems, I think you're looking at McGregor and Cameron Carter-Vickers with maybe Hitati coming off the bench for the final half hour. Maybe even Cal McGregor comes off in place of Rio Hitati if the game is won and sealed. I think that'd be great game management from the manager. But I'm looking forward to seeing so many players. Um, uh, Yang, you know, it hasn't really been spoken about a lot, but he was, he was voted the MVP in that under-23 competition that he was in. Um, I seen it on, on transfer market. He was the, the top player in the three games in which he played. I think it was um I think it was Thailand, Saudi Arabia and Australia, and he was yep. South Korea's best player by some distance. So that's good going for him. Good that he's got game time because he needed it because he had that, that two game suspension. He'll be fit and firing and ready for it. Um and, and there's there's other players as well that I'm looking forward to, but I'm just looking forward to having Celtic back, having something you know, a game to talk about, a performance, good or bad, to talk about, you know, because it's been so long since we've been, we kind of been talking about that St. Johnson game, and now we've got something that we can actually analyse and review, which will be good on Sunday afternoon. 
Can't wait for it. Would you make the McGregor stuff, Tony? Do you, do you really <laughs> see where I'm coming from? And that yeah, like, yeah. it could just be something Jerry McCulloch might just have said because he's going to be back at some stage. I think it was the ultimate teaser, wasn't it? Let's be honest. Though the return of Kyle Max imminent, you know, because that immediately makes you think of Sunday, doesn't it? And I just think he's been uh, he's been nursed through this international week to come back for Sunday. I just think it's a. Uh, I think he will be back on Sunday. People say, oh, you wouldn't risk him and you wouldn't risk Cameron and Carter Vickers. But, you know, if Celtic don't risk these players and they go there and they drop points, then they'll say, why yeah. didn't you play them? You know, Next week doesn't we play, matter as much as uh, can he beat we play, we play our strongest team. Yeah. You know, I think, and I'm in, inclined to agree, that Callum McGregor's played a lot of football this season. It's just a temporary blip in his kind of uh, season, a uh, campaign that he was out with this Achilles problem. Cameron Carter Vickers is fit, he's played, and uh, Rio Atati is the one for me that will be coming off the bench uh, just to get him minutes before you're throwing him straight in at Ibrox. That's my, that's in my head. That, um, you know, we try and be the manager and put myself in the manager's chair, we pick one eleven and all that kind of stuff, but that makes sense to me. Cameron Carter Vickers plays on Sunday, McGregor plays on Sunday, Rio Atati comes on and gets some minutes, and then all three play at Ibrox. If, if I'm wrong, I'll hold my hands up and say I'm wrong, but it, it seems seems perfectly uh, reasonable and plausible to me. I, I don't see any kind of... Because as, as I said, about people were saying about Cameron Carter-Vickers not playing and not risking them. I think it sends out the wrong message if Cameron Carter-Vickers doesn't play. You're inviting Livingston on to you. Agree. Right? And to play their big centre forwards whose names escape me, but you know, the big battering rams, you're inviting pressure on the likes of Scales and Welsh if it is that pairing. Cameron Carter Vickers plays, they know, all right, okay, maybe not going to get as much joy. So for me, it's a no brainer, he has to play. No, I agree. I mean, for, you know, for me, it comes down to the um, the debate over what, you know, what's a bigger worry for you, Carter Vickers playing and potentially picking up an injury. Or Celtic going to Livingston without Cameron Carter Vickers, and we we saw the um, the issues they gave us in in that last game. I'm just looking for the guy's name here. Yet yeah, Teddy Yenge, that's the guy we're talking about, isn't it? Who scored the the brilliant yeah. goal at, at Celtic Park? Um, it'll be interesting to see what Brendan Rodgers has to say today. Later today, I think you guys are going to do a video afterwards as well. I'm sure there'll be plenty of stuff on yesterday, um, and just plenty of stuff generally because we've not heard from Brendan Rodgers for a a wee while, have we? I know he did a he did that Celtic TV interview, but they kind of don't count half the time, do they? Because you don't really you don't really get much kind of interest and stuff from them, right? Uh, Dennis, wondering what's your team for Sunday? Now you guys usually hold back your teams, don't you? Yeah. But um, but I don't. I don't have to do that. So um, Joe Hart, Johnston, Carter Vickers, Scales, who I think will be back. Taylor, I'm going Iwata. McGregor, O'Reilly, Kuhn, Maida, Furuhashi. You can, you're not going to, neither of these are giving Spoiler, anything away, are you? Spoiler alert, but I'm probably picking the same team as you, if that's the case. Although, I've got to say that right wing spot, I'm to and fro because both are on form at the moment. Can he drop Probably Kuhn, would. can you? I know, I know... Uh, Yang's been on form as well. The only reason why Yang wouldn't be playing is because he he, he had those two game that two game ban. He looked dangerous even against Hearts in the opening ten minutes before he got sent off for a dangerous challenge on Alex Cochran. So he was dangerous in all elements of that game. But I, I just think both look to be solid options. I'd love a, a scenario where you could play both of them because I I like my wingers being direct. And, and trying to beat a man and, and get the ball into the box or, or make something happen or score a goal. Those two players are the most direct players that Celtic have at the moment. And I wish, if there is a, a way in which you can play the both of them, I don't, I don't even want to drop Dyson Maida because you know what he, he can bring you. And he's one of the first names on the team sheet for Ibrox. Great record against he Livingston. Tavern, yeah. he scored, he scored mm-hmm. so many goals against Livingston Maida as well, Hatcher, a couple of weeks ago. And he's also he's one that you don't worry about on that surface. No, he's well. Yeah, he's actually a player that suits the surface yeah, as well does, because it's unpredictable I mean, and he's unpredictable. And uh, he he never he's never pulled up on that surface. He never shows any signs of 
no muscle fatigue or anything. So, uh, in terms of spoiler alert, Hamish, I, um, I'm not a million miles away from the team that you've just named there. So. It's going to be a very boring video <laughs> stroke, when you two do your teams. Stroke, stroke yes. Uh, there's, uh, <laughs> there's 311s for you, you know what I mean? Yeah, indeed. But listen, that for me is the strongest team. The dilemma is the wingers, isn't it? Basically. Yeah. It's between yeah. it's a toss up between Kuhn and Yang, but you know me, I'm a year like years ago, Kuhn's got it just now. And then they've got they've both got a game to prove who comes in for Ibrox, I think. Personally. I mean Quinny's you know? Qu- Quinny's bring up Rio Hitati. Is there is there any chance of Hitati starting a game? Don't get me You'd wrong. Be shocked, I wouldn't you? No, I, w- I wouldn't be shocked, especially because Brendan Rodgers has made it very, very clear whenever he's talking about Rio Atati that he is a player that Celtic have missed this season. They've missed his dynamism um, and what he can bring in the middle of the park. He is the risk taker in that midfield. He brings you something completely different to what Cal McGregor, Matt O'Reilly, Paolo Bernardo, etc., etc., can all bring. There was a goal that I shared last night that I think's kind of been forgotten about, the one where he, I think it was against Kilmarnock. Yeah, it was against Kilmarnock where yeah. he where he nutmegged uh, Watson, Watson. Uh, David Watson, and went right through and scored. Uh, that, that goal feels like ages ago, but I remember that performance. I think Palma scored as well in that game, but Rio Atati yeah. ran the show. A complete enough, and you know he can do that. For a player that's been in and out, and not just for injuries as well, got to remember he wasn't fancied at the start of the season ahead of David Turnbull, which was yeah. quite an odd time to be alive, in all honesty, if you're playing Turnbull over Hitati, given you know Hitati's talents. But... I think he now knows what's expected of him from Rodgers. He knows that he needs to play more defensively, maybe he needs to take care of the ball. He can't take as many risks as he did under Ange Postacoglu, who allowed for that to happen. He allowed Rio to maybe make make mistakes because, you know, the, the, the dynamic passes will happen once or twice and he'll carve open a team in, in different opportunities. But I, I think he knows now. I think both have a mutual understanding of how to make each other tick and... If he was to start, I wouldn't complain. It would show that he's ready. But, um, yeah, it, it's, I, I, don't, I don't mind if he starts or not. If he's, if he's ready, then he can start. But for me, I'd play Cal McGregor over over Hitati at this moment in time. It wouldn't surprise you if he started, right? Because you need to go and win the game. But you're thinking logically here and introduce him. He said one bounce game or a part of a bounce game. Give him some more valuable minutes and then see how he comes through that. And, uh, you know, he is fit. he's clearly fit to play because he's played. But, you know, you don't want to take unnecessary risks with Hattati because he's missed a lot of football this season. So I think he's the man for living so far. At least half an hour. He has to get half an hour, in my opinion. You know, at least that, if not a half. Uh, you know, so um, I'm not expecting him to start. don't think he will. But it wouldn't surprise me if he did. Let's put it that way. Uh, AJSC Tech uh, putting forward Pillow Bernardo's name as he is a, a big unit and useful as uh, at defensive set pieces. Joe hoping that we can click now, uh, now that we have a nearly full squad. I mean, it really is just Mike Narovsky that's injured. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's amazing that Celtic only really have one injury now because it seems as if they've had about four or five at different points all season. Now everybody seems to be coming back apart from Navrovsky. And he's, a, he's been a bit of a forgotten man because he'll come into the team, have maybe a couple of good performances, a couple of off performances, and then get injured once again. That's maybe something to look at in the summer. You know, He's not really contributed all that much apart from that cut and pass. Palmer led as to well. the Palmer's yeah, injured. Palmer, Palmer's yeah, injured. He's out for a, for a month. Um, the, the comment section keep us right. We, we really do appreciate <laughs> they that. They know more than us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that only having two reputable injuries at this point is pretty good going. Now, I know that, that could increase touch wood that doesn't happen on Sunday, but right now they're looking pretty good injury-wise or um, lack of injury-wise. But what a time to get most of your team back. What a time. Yeah. You know, I just it's, I think everybody's kind of feeling a bit better about this last eight games now, nine including the Scottish Cup semi-final. But as I said before, my priorities are league, always will be. And uh, yeah, I mean, I want to win the Scottish Premiership and Scottish Cup double, but 
call it the league big time more than anything. So that's but that's it. It's 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 just a it's just a good a good problem for Brendan Rogers to have now, isn't it? In terms of options. I'm all for that. We all feel good about Celtic again. Yeah. But I, th- yeah. I think we need to remember though that the team have let us down a fair bit so far this season when yeah. we've been feeling good and have thrown in daft performances. We can't afford any more of them guys. Like we're at the point of the season where, you know, one slip could be fatal. We need to be at it on Sunday. There are no excuses for the team not to be at it. I personally think they will. I think they'll be choking to get out there. Um but you uh, but a Celtic <laughs> team you don't know until the game starts. I DM'd Ryan last night my thoughts on what would happen, didn't I, Ryan? <laughs> Uh, he said, "Hope so." I think the words were, "We'll gub them." I think something like that. <laughs> but that, that's the way I'm feeling because I'm feeling like you. Yeah. I think the players will come out the traps, and uh, you know, so um, I'm expecting a huge performance from Celtic on Sunday. Statement like win. That's certainly the scenario I'm painting in my mind, and I know I get the pitch and all that, but I just think the players are over that now, and you know, there's. There's players here who are desperate to make a point and also they're just desperate to fire Celtic to the title as well. And I include Kyogo in that. Can't wait to see Kyogo at the weekend and just see, you know, you know, if he's up for he's got a good record against Levy as well. Uh just a few comments before we go. Parkhead boy saying, Come on guys, Celtic surely don't need to play CCV McGregor and Hatati to beat next season's championship club. Perhaps not, but the point I would make is at this stage of the season, do you want to risk it? Do you want to not play those players and, and slip up in a game like this? You play your best team, guys. There, there's not that many games to go. There's no more midweek games, really. Maybe one, maybe two. Um, certainly not You know, immediately in the horizon. Get your best team out there. Your best fit team out there. Get CCV starting. You know, McGregor, if he's ready to start. start. And the thing about McGregor, he doesn't really, when he comes back from an injury, he's never really eased in, is he? I don't remember Callum McGregor ever coming off the bench for Celtic. He's always just straight in, which I think says a lot about him. So I think he'll either start or he probably won't feature at all, to be honest. Um, and yeah, Tom is saying Livio will sit back and, and try to frustrate. Excited, guys. It's been a long old international break, but we're, we're nearly back. What else have you you guys got planned video-wise before kick-off? Uh, we get the press conference video, which will be... Uh, one of the last things we do before we finish probably, so it'll be around about four or five o'clock, around about that time. And then we've got the pre-match at the Tony Macaroni. We'll be live from the Tony Macaroni, um, live with the team, the, the team lineups, and then we'll do the post-match once the game is over. So we've got all of that, and then we'll be back on, on Monday to discuss it with you, Hamish. We will. Enjoy your weekend, guys. Just a final shout-out for um, this wonderful offer we've got going. Six months of access for the Celtic Way for just a single pound and you get a free Kyogo Furuhashi print from renowned football artist made by Frankie. Uh, Tony Ryan, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And, um, yeah, I hope we all have a good weekend and we can reconvene for the next morning briefing on Monday. Feeling very good about Celtic. Have a lovely